Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the TDJ show. Today's show we're going to talk about peptic ulcer. I know most of you call it ulcer, it's commonly called ulcer ulcer, but the actual term is peptic ulcer. Now, peptic ulcer is quite common in the population. It affects about 10% of the population. So, you know, almost somebody knows somebody who has ulcer at one point in time or the other. And there are two kinds of ulcer. We have the gastric and then the duodenal ulcer. Now, before I proceed, let me tell you what an ulcer is. So medically, we describe it as a break in the continuity of an epithelium. Now, let me bring that one down. When you have a surface, let's say that's the surface of my palm, it's an epithelium. If there's a break in it, there's a crack, there's a source, something it provided, it is no longer continuous and there's a break. It's an ulcer. So locally, I'll describe it as some form of sore, but it's in different degrees. It can just be an abrasion, like, you know, a small scratch, or it can be a bigger or a deeper sore. You know, it can go through the extent of my palm. So based on how you know, mild or severe that sore is, it will determine some of your symptoms and then the progression. Now, it is a disease of the stomach and the duodenum. The stomach is where the food usually goes to and the duodenum is the first part of the intestines. Immediately from the stomach, the next part food goes to is the duodenum. So also usually it affects either of the two. So when they affect the stomach, we call it a gastric ulcer, like I said earlier. And when they affect the duodenum, we call it a duodenal ulcer. It's not very simple to distinguish the two, but I'll let you know a few tricks that you can tell that although it's not very clear. Now, what causes ulcer? The commonest cause that we know and most people are aware of is, an, is by an infection by an organism that we call Helicobacter pylori, commonly known as H. pylori. Now, it's really endemic in our system. So most people, some people even have it and they don't have ulcer. But then when you have it, it predisposes you to developing an ulcer. How does it do that? So we all know that our stomach has acid, which helps in digestion. But this organism produces something called urease that neutralizes the acid. So makes it very comfortable to stay in the stomach because on a normal circumstance, because of the acid, organism cannot, organisms cannot stay in the stomach. So now it makes itself very comfortable in the stomach. And it produces something, something called gastrin. It increases the production of gastrin, which will now increase the production of the acid more than usual. So then makes the stomach prone to high levels of these substances and makes it easy to develop ulcer. And in the duodenum, God has also put some base, you know, if you have heard of acid same base, they neutralize each other. So there's a base called bicarbs in the duodenum. So when the acidic food comes, it neutralizes it and then the digestion continues, but then it reduces the production. So then when the acidic food gets there, then it makes the duodenum prone and exposed to the acidic content. And then it can, you know, start destroying the place to cause the ulcer. So being infected with H. pylori is one of the most common and the most important causes of ulcer. Secondly, is medication, most, mostly the NSAIDs. NSAID means non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Now, examples of these drugs are diclofenac, ibuprofen, naclofen, aspirin, and others. When you have, you know, or you are taking this medication, it's all based on how the medication works. It can help you develop ulcer. I mean, it has its own pathophysiology. I don't want to go into details of how it does that because of our time. But you know that if you take this medication continuously and indiscriminately, you can have ulcer. And when you, you have these two, H. pylori and they are taking this medication, it has a synergistic effect. That is, it comes together to worsen it or makes it more likely for you to have the infection. Now, we have other causes as well, like stress. When you are very stressed or you have a disease that stresses your system, it can predispose you to ulcer. So, realize when somebody has a severe condition on admission, we give some medications to help prevent the person from developing ulcer. If not, by the time you get discharged, you may have an ulcer. Burns can also contribute to you having ulcer. So we call those ones Cushing's and Kerlin's ulcer. That is the Benz one and then the one from a severe disease. Alcohol, indiscriminate use of alcohol can predispose you to ulcer. Sometimes obesity and tobacco, they also have a bit of contribution. So all these are lifestyle, you know, causes 
of peptic ulcer. We have some genetic predisposition as well. People talk about um, O group, O like people with blood group O and other things that can increase your chances. It is not straightforward, but just increase your chances. And if you have a strong family history, it increases your chances of getting this ulcer. So how do you know you have peptic ulcer? Usually you have pain in your epigastric region. That's the upper part of your abdomen most of the time. That's where you have the pain. It can be some form of burning sensation. It can be like annoying pain. Or it can be very bad pain. Usually it is related to food. Sometimes you feel it either you are hungry or after you've eaten. If you feel the pain immediately after eating, most likely it could be a gastric ulcer. If you feel it two to three hours after eating, most likely it could be the duodenal ulcer. For those with the duodenal ulcers, they usually have night pain. Around 2 a.m., you realize that they have pain in the, it, it wakes them up. So people with duodenal ulcer usually experience that kind of pain. Now, when it is started, sometimes you have a bit of dyspepsia. When we talk about dyspepsia, it's like some form of indigestion. You feel bloated, like you are full of gas, or sometimes you have heart bends. Sometimes you have some chest discomfort, especially after eating. If you have that, it is also a sign that you are developing or you have ulcers. Now, based on the severity, the symptoms can change. So these ones we are talking about are for more milder conditions. As it gets more severe, you can start bleeding. So when you have been, how do you know? You can either vomit blood or you can start producing feces that is black in color. Anytime you produce feces, you have to go to the hospital because it could be you bleeding from your tummy. Sometimes too, you can develop sudden onset pain. So painful that you won't be able to move or do anything unless we take you to the hospital. It is a complicated ulcer. With those ones, you might even need a surgery. Sometimes, especially with people with gastric ulcer, it can, you know, propagate and later lead to a cancer. For some, it, it doesn't happen often, but it can happen. And when you're having this, so we have some things we call the danger signs or the dangerous signs. That's when you have signs of anemia. You are dizzy, your heart is beating, you know, and then the, the least thing you do, you're feeling tired. When you eat, you get full easily, called early satiety. And then you are losing weight. When you have ulcer and you start seeing these signs, these are the danger signs. You have to rush the hospital because it could be that your ulcer is leading to cancer. We have another complication that we call GO. That one, this, it has formed some form of scar at the lower part of your stomach. So food is not easily going down. So you get nauseous easily and you can have bouts of vomiting. Usually two to three days after, you can hold food for a very long time. And you have severe vomiting that you will see food that you ate two or three days previous. If you see something like that, means you have a very complicated ulcer that is leading to what we call gastric outlet obstruction. That is the GO. So these are some of the things you see, whether you have a mild one or you have a complicated one. Now, what do you do when you have this? You go to your doctor. You talk, talk to your doctor about it from the history and the question the doctor asks you, we will know whether it is mild or severe. And then based on that, we will ask you certain questions and do certain investigation. Your doctor will examine you, have a feel of your tummy, and make you do some tests. They will test for the H. pylori. In our region, the commonest way we check is through our stool sample. Your poo will analyze it to see if you have the antigen. And then, in order to confirm, you have to do an endoscopy. We put a tube through your mouth, through to the stomach, to visualize the place, to see what's there. That's the only way we will see whether you actually have a, an ulcer there or not, and to see the degree of the ulcer. Sometimes when you're even bleeding, we can use that same procedure to stop the bleeding. So the endoscopy is very important. That's the only way we can actually confirm that you actually have an ulcer and also sometimes we use it to treat by stopping bleeding. So the main diagnosis is the endoscopy. As for the stool and things, you are just looking out for the H. pylori and all that. Now, your daughter may take blood sample because you want to know your blood level, maybe you are bleeding, maybe, you know, other things, complications are setting in so that we can treat you appropriately. And then if you have maybe perforation, that is the ulcer has gone all the way through the stomach or the insect that has created a hole, then that one, it would require a surgical intervention. So based on how you present, how your symptoms are, it would tell us how we should investigate you and how we should treat you. So we've spoken about the symptoms, we've spoken about the complications and how we diagnose. So hope you 
understand all these things. If you have any questions, you can put your questions below, and you can look at the, the um, you can call us or WhatsApp us on our line that we have already showing on the screen so that we can address your concerns and all your questions. So this is all we have about peptic ulcer. I know there are a lot of people out there who are being, you know, troubled by this disease. Please rush your near, nearest facility. Get treated. Thank you very much. Thank you.